Hello, this is Martin and Christian from Wobbler, and you're now listening to Progcast. Hello everyone, uh, this is your host Rune this time, uh, doing the broadcast. And I'm so lucky that I have with me two of the guys from Norwegian progressive rock band Wobbler. This is Martin and Christian. Um, could you please introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your, what your role is in the band and so on? Yeah, uh, my name is Martin, and I'm a drummer and founding member of uh, Wobbler since uh, the autumn of 1999. Uh, yes. Yeah, and I'm Christian. Uh, I play bass in Wobbler uh, and some saxophone when the songs require it. And I'm sort of a founding member of Wobbler. Martin and Lars was, you know, a couple of months uh, before me. But, uh, we've been in Wobbler for a long time, both of us. Close rate. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to have two of the oldest members. As as you guys mentioned, of course, uh, Wobbler started out in 1999, and it's easy to say that you are uh, you are a, a progressive rock band inspired by the 70s. Would that be a correct statement from me? Yeah, I guess so. Uh... I think in the 90s, uh, with the grunge scene and stuff, at least for me, uh, progressive rock was kind of a, a, a way to be different and uh, to be cool <laughs> and to stand out. So kind of we used uh, progressive rock from the 70s to be uh, a little different from all the rest. And, and we really, at least me, I really, really love that part of it kind of distinguished ourselves from the lot uh, back in the 90s. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, you know, we love the music as well. It wasn't just a, a fancy what kind of genre should we now, you know, embrace because it was different. We we also, you know, love the bands and love the, the songs and the, the way of recording and all that. But it's, Yeah, yeah, of course. Of yeah. course, uh, love the music and... Uh, but you know, there's lots of great music uh, all over the place. So uh, if it's a coincidence that we are progress or not, I'm not really sure. What do you think, Christian? Uh, I think maybe um, for me at least, if I hadn't, you know, teamed up with you, you guys, in, when I was a teenager, maybe I would have played an instrument. But I, I'm not sure if I would have been, you know been able to have a progressive rock band or, or a band like Wobbler now, because uh, maybe something would have, you know, something other would have grabbed my interest, but um, yeah, well, difficult. Well, there's lots of social things about it, you know, being a gang in a little, <laughs> little town, yeah. enjoying the same kind of music was really strong when you're a teenager, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, that's very understandable, and I think for a lot of guys who plays in band that social aspect is a big part of why they started being a musician or started playing in a band so but let's let's uh, mention that your new album uh, dwellers in the deep that's supposed to be out uh, or it's going to come out in about one week from now from when we're recording this so yeah. are you happy with the reception you've had so far? Have you had any reviews? And are people enjoying this new uh, single of yours? It's called Five Rooms, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, we've uh, gotten lots of uh, good, uh, what should we call them, pre-reviews that have you know been able to listen to the, the record uh, beforehand. And we've gotten, well... Uh, I'd say 90% of it is, is in, you know, uh, overwhelmingly positive. There's, of course, uh, always the, you know, the reviewer who thinks this and that, but, but uh, I think we're generally very pleased at the reaction so far. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think uh, one of the best reviews ever uh, came from um, <clears throat> Romania regarding this record. Uh, and the reviewer, he said that... Uh, to listen to this record was like having your feet washed by Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> wow, that's that's quite a review. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. <it's good. laughs> so, fun. so can you tell us a little bit about the dwellers in the deep? Uh, you know, I know your your music is very like uh, it's it's very deep, both lyrically and 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 musically uh what are the themes and ideas that went into dwellers in the deep well i think it's basically we, we started out uh as i said in kind of a lot of interviews that we we understood that we couldn't make you know uh from silences to somber all over again it was even though we loved that record and it was fun to play we we had to do something, uh, you know, songs with a different uh, different feel to it, I think. We just to not copy yourself uh, well, and all that. So I think Dwellers is a result of uh, a mix between uh, having some uh, material uh, beforehand. Lars had a, an older song that he hadn't used uh, for anything. And, and he, that's basically his song. And um, uh, the other songs are, are much more, you know, jammed out. It's much more a cooperative uh, works because uh, usually we have a couple of long songs where, where uh, there's, you know, there's one composer who has the, you know, the main idea. But this time around, we we sort of. Uh, managed to to integrate uh, parts that all of us had, and of course we had to make them fit. Uh, so hopefully it's not a mismatch or you know uh, different uh, teams just on piled on, uh, on top of it, in each other. But uh, this jamming thing, you know, making whole compositions uh, together, that was interesting and a bit new. Yeah, that that yeah. sort of goes into one of the questions I I an, another question I had because of course your music is very detailed. It's very complex. It's like your recurring themes and 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 you know. But it still it seems very. It seems like everything is laid out in like a perfect puzzle. So so uh, how difficult is is it for you to compose the kind of music that's on on your albums? <clears throat> well. It's it's uh, it tends to be quite a long process. Uh, so typically, someone has a general idea about something, uh, and then we we uh, you know get together in the rehearsal space and and try to 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 find out what what, what is this, what is, what's happening, and then maybe someone says, well, I have a kind of a passage with. Uh, fits this uh, this kind of um, mood, uh, and um, we kind of jam it out, and it's lots of back and forth. Ah, it should be five times oh four, blah blah blah. <laughs> lots of rhetorics and and uh, yeah, fun process in the <laughs> in the rehearsal space, uh, and then you go into the recording uh, phase. Uh, and lots of things can happen then as well. Uh, typically, Lars comes up with some crazy ideas which uh, none of us have heard before. <laughs> and I've been quite surprised a couple of times in that process. But that's cool. That's kind of wobbler. Uh, everyone uh, contributes in their own way. And um, I think myself, okay, I play the drums, but Maybe I'm kind of a mediator <laughs> sometimes. Maybe, okay, okay, uh, calm down, guys. Maybe if you play that, uh, <laughs> it's a fun process. <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> it's usually, Martin, that, that uh, stops us when we've discussed, uh, you know, a two-bar change for like half an hour. Just two bars have we been discussing, and what about this? No, no, no. I think that's a bit. What about this then? Ah, uh-uh, if I do that, and then suddenly Martin bangs the symbol, and then he <clears throat> puts up a face, or he says, "Just come on, guys. This is yeah." So <laughs> yeah, I've been close quitting the band a couple of times. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 
So you're the guy who has to sort of push things through sometimes when it's just it 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 goes back and forth and it doesn't uh, it it takes some time to get a resolution to things. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, I think everyone has had their time being like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> come on guys, let's uh, let's finish this. <laughs> yeah, but that's the the it's 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 quite fun. <laughs> uh, looking back at some of those uh, <laughs> experiences <laughs> so do you guys do you guys then send uh, i know a lot of bands are like um almost every, everything goes on online and of course in this time we're in now I, I know most bands have a difficult time of getting to meet up and stuff but like regularly would you guys send like ids to each other or does most of it go on like in the rehearsal room with the jamming as you said or I think the jamming stuff, you know, all of us coming together is a rather uh, newish thing for what we're, at least when it comes to composing something that becomes a final uh, final product. Because uh, I think most of our, our, our songs, are, we've been together, you know, played the parts and, and uh, of course some, you know, some can send just a sketch of this is... This is a vocal part I, I made. What do you think about it? Could you add something to it? But uh, I think most of our output is actually, you know, played and refined by all five of us mm. in the rehearsal. Because, uh, like I've understood from Lars, uh, you guys, not all of you live close to each other. So it's not like you can meet up every, like, <laughs> several times each week to play or whatever, right? So. Um, Marius, the guitar player, he lives on the west coast of Norway, close to Haugesen. Oh, I see. So he ha he has a, depending on the weather, he has a, you know, between seven and eight hours drive to get there. So, uh, you know, uh, it's sometimes difficult to, to make space for, because he usually have, you know, he, uh, he can take uh, free of work or something, or he has a weekend that we have to to meet up and that that can be challenging so yeah <clears throat> yeah but at the same time you're more focused and maybe more um uh, effective than uh, for some years uh, ago yeah yeah um that's true regarding the 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 process of making the songs i think i think maybe we're a little back to how Maybe we made Hinterland because that was a lot, a, a yeah. lot of jamming and and then we had the time to do to work like that a little more. Uh, but I think maybe uh, Right at Dawn and um, <laughs> the last one. <laughs> uh, what's the name again? Dwellers in the Deep. Silence. Silence. Oh, you know, Silence is somewhere. Oh yeah. We made yeah. those. Uh, those were made more. Um, uh, more uh, written out on beforehand, kind of. Oh yeah, written, written. I mean, uh, Andreas had so, had a very, you know, loose sketch. He had everything in it, but he didn't know where to put uh, the different themes. And I, I remember in our old rehearsal space, we spent countless hours try, hours trying to m make the puzzle come together. So it's also the strength about being uh, like forty years old. You don't. Know? have the time you had when you were 16 or 17 i i don't understand this what, what's happened <laughs> you have to be more efficient if you're <laughs> yeah. if you're gonna get things done right well you mentioned yeah. from silence to somewhere and 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 that that sort of segues into something else i wanted to talk about because that album was uh, i feel like that album was a very big album for you guys uh, first thing is it took quite a long time between uh, the previous album, uh, right at dawn, until you came up to from silence to somewhere, and then sort of I felt like you exploded onto the scene a bit with that album, and it it opened up new opportunities for you, I guess, to play. You played like big festivals, like in Germany, Night of the Prog. You played something in Italy, didn't you? Like a Scandinavian Prog Fest, or so. So can you? How was that experience of releasing that album? That was uh, very exciting and it was, you know, utterly joyful. It was 
like I think we didn't think about it at the time, but it was sort of a uh, call it a comeback or call it you know we don't think so, but uh, I guess the, you know uh, our fans and audience they maybe or most certainly listen. Where's what we've gotten to? Okay, maybe they've folded, maybe they've given up, and suddenly we have a new album that's uh, and the, re- the reception was you know <laughs> beyond my expectations. So it was a, as you say, a, a big boon for us to could to could be able to do that. So yeah, what, what what happened with that record? Uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, um, when we made it, I, I wasn't sure. Is it a good? Is it is it good music? Is it bad? I don't know. It's Wobbler, all right, but how, how does it compare with uh, the other material? I, I did not know. And then I, I read the reviews, and I was blown away. Uh, and I started to listen to the record in a different way, and I kind of okay, this isn't so bad. Maybe we're onto something here. And. Uh, Especially reading the uh, the ratings and stuff on Progressive Airs uh, uh, and uh, uh, and Prog Archives. I mean, uh, at one time it was uh, maybe 12th best album of all time. <laughs> I was like, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's kind of interesting with the, from Silence to Somewhere. The fact that it became such a, it it went up on all the lists and it got compared to like classics of the genre, like from the seventies. And 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 what are your your views on that? How 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 does that make you feel like to be <laughs> being compared to some of the the like well known seventies albums? Uh, embarrassed, to be honest. No, that's, uh, I'm, of course, very delighted that people, I hope it's the reason why is because people find something in our music that they, that uh, same as I found in those classic when I heard them the first time. So, uh, but personally, I, I think it's, I'm very humble because those albums that we are comparing, that people compare us to, the bands, that it's the you know probably some of the greatest music ever made that uh, I'm listening to myself. So it's kind of a what <laughs> what shall I do with this reception? How should I respond? Because uh, yeah, the bar is so high. But again, I hope that's because uh, the audience and they you know got something out of it in the same vein as I did when I listened to those, you know, the great, uh, great bands, great albums. So I'm sort of clinging to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've given something, we've given something out to people that they, you know, like so much and I'm humbled by it. And, and of course, delighted that we, we nailed it to such a high degree. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been wondering about that break between rights at dawn and from silence to somewhere oh. because when you guys came back it seemed like might just be my impression but then that was the second album right of of, of your vocalist andreas and it seemed like the vocals had a more natural place in the mo- in the music or maybe not even that like maybe the music was more friendly to the vocals in a way i, I don't know what you think about that yeah, I, I can I can tell you about that because uh, right we made before uh, Andreas joined the band. Actually, all the music was kind of I think recorded as well, uh, oh. and then uh, uh, we had some ideas uh, which part where to have uh, vocal parts, uh, 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 and uh, and kind of Andreas just uh, figured this out himself and found the melodies not being a part of the process. Uh, so uh, that might have turned out a little awkward here and there. Uh, still a, 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 a great record, I think, with uh, <laughs> lots of positivity and, and light. Yes, absolutely. A um, great album. But like you say, yeah, it, yeah it's, it makes sense but, what you're but, saying. Uh, but the next album, you know, he, he wrote a lot of the music himself. And uh, it's, 
uh, it's the true arrival of Andreas Presmo in in Wobbler. Uh, uh, it is this um, uh, <laughs> christening. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I see. <laughs> I, I really, see what. Yeah. Truly fantastic. His uh, his approach to the music, and and how uh, and how uh, kind of similar he thinks progressive rock rock like the other of us because we didn't grow up together, uh, grow up together, but uh, we have the kind of the same musical DNA, and that's just so nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's very it's very like I said, it was quite clear to me when I listened for, to from Silence to Somewhere that there was something different about the vocal approach, and that continues on to this new album, of course, where you can clearly hear that the vocals have that Andreas' vocals is more like integrated into the band's music than it was on, on his first album. So, so, But also I wanted to ask about, you know, you guys seem to be like uh, vintage gearheads, especially Lars, of course, but the rest of you as well, I think. And, and uh, I'm guessing you have accumulated a lot of stuff over the years since you started the band. Does that like shape the music or the, the songwriting in any way? Like what kind of gear you use? Maybe not, you know, maybe it doesn't shape the music as such, but uh, I think it was Lars who, 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 you know, when he gets that uh, question, he he also compares it to, the, you know, all the equipment doesn't sound uh, the same across the, the keyboard, right? One, one note can maybe be a bit higher, it quirks, it makes, it's been, you know, it's old stuff. So... Uh, Maybe not, you know, uh, maybe not that big an impression on, on, the, on the songs themselves, but how it sounds, how we feel about it. I think it's it's more correct to say because um, it seems more alive, and I can agree with that uh, to to some extent. Yeah. And in the in the keyboard parts, I think uh, it's important that it's certain stuff you just can't play on the melodron because. Oh, how many octaves it is, and uh, how long you can press uh, uh, the key. So you have to play that intro instrument in a special way to, you know, make it sound good, and uh, and that makes some limits uh, or of frames for what you're gonna do. And and if you have to to do something within <laughs> kind of a frame, you have to be a little more creative, and and other stuff happens. Uh, than if you were playing on a regular uh, sampled uh, keyboard, which you can do like everything. You have to be creative in other ways. And of course that translates to how uh, the music uh, ends up. Yeah, I guess, you know, when you look at uh, all those recordings from the 70s, not only progressive rock, but also like pop music or rock music, they were doing a lot of weird shit in the studio to make like sounds and to, and and sometimes it was a lot of lucky mistakes, right? And I guess with your approach, you can sort of have that happen in a way more with your with your more vintage equipment sometimes maybe. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I think that's true because especially for, for Lars, because Lars has his you know his own studio and he has a lot of instruments. Um, the marks of phone, which is this kind of you know. Uh, it's a uh, yeah. What is it? It's, uh, <laughs> it's almost like a sitter that you play. You can play it with a pick, or you can make chords with it. And that's that's his sort of his uh, go-to scary part instrument because it sounds so airy. It's kind of you know in the background in in a horror movie you would hear that kind of sound. And uh, that's an old you know old instrument he has just picked up because he liked the sound of it and. Suddenly, he can, you know, make a little uh, flange on uh, on the microphone and maybe put some echo on it. And suddenly, it, it becomes part of. We couldn't ever recreate that exact sound live. But as you say, when you are in the studio, we experiment and uh, we tweak, and we, of course, the old instruments are analog and they're hands-on, so you can't tweak them because. If we were a band with you know just um, digital digital synths and 
maybe digital, even digital pedal boards for the guitar. You can you can't have that hands-on tweaking um, aspect of it. So in the studio, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you mentioned live because that's something I I wanted to ask as well. You know the with all your vintage equipment, the analog equipment and everything, it's like it's not like carrying like your Mac around or your like a, a a light plasticky keyboard. What kind of challenges does it like bring to to when you you put this music live on the stage? Uh, I think that the greatest challenge is our pride. <laughs> <laughs> kind of because we want to have this equipment, and of course you can't have it uh, everywhere. And we, <laughs> back in the day, we turned down a lot of great opportunities actually because of the equipment. And how stupid isn't that, you know? Uh, or maybe maybe not then because today it's quite it, it's much more easier to 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 still reproduce the sound. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, you can actually use a Mellotron app. And if you use that Mellotron app on your cell phone and you it goes through a Roland Space Echo, you get the quirkiness. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and uh, it sounds at least okay. So we're not so... Uh, <laughs> so um, we have a... Uh, uh, yeah, help me out, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I, I think we learned throughout the years that we can't can't be so quirky uh, that we want to be because we the songs are still there even though maybe maybe the keyboards or, or the you know the equipment the sound uh, from uh, from them are maybe they're forty percent off from what or fifty even from what we you know wanted to express but. Uh, I think we learned to make it work the best we can, and uh, yeah, that goes for all of us. You know, uh, sometimes in, in Italy, for example, the you know uh, amplifiers for for guitar, uh, bass, everything like that is um, sometimes it's just what you can find in a Norwegian you know primary school music room, and when you. St- if you look at that and just stand there, you you could you can't do anything about it. You have to <laughs> you have to make it work. So I think it would be a lot better to you know find solutions on the fly or or, or yeah, yeah, live experience in that regard. Yeah, I guess you guys sort of in a way now get the best of both worlds. That worlds then right because you have all your equipment, your vintage equipment, in the studio, and you can sort of experiment and create that those those sounds you want and then you know once the album is is ready and you're going out on the road it's it's maybe easier now to recreate that sound but you don't have those like synthetic or like digital instruments in the stu- studio so i guess it's it's sort of a best of both worlds yeah and uh, and uh, what's happened at the digital uh, <laughs> so to speak yeah. it's, it's it's amazing the last years uh, lots of nice emulations of keyboards and uh, organs and uh, and a lot of nice uh, mellotron samples, uh, Solina string samples. So so today you can found mostly the same. If yeah, quite easy, not yeah. With uh, it's much easier than like uh, fifteen years ago. Yeah. I'd- about that playing live thing, you know, uh, now that Wobbler has been out on the road a lot and like we talked about, you got the chance to play Germany, you played big festival there, you played the Italy festival there. Uh, what is your, what's the highlight, you know, of the Wobbler live experience so far? I think um, Night of the Prog is, is obviously um, just... Uh, because it's the you know the largest prog festival in in Europe, it's an event uh, on its own. So it, it's kind of I don't think we actually played the best we had live on that festival. To to be honest, we we managed and things things were you know on par and everything sounded good. But you know you always have uh, you know when you've delivered like hundred percent, and maybe I think we were like you know ninety ninety five percent. So, <laughs> that's not yeah. too bad. 
No, no, no. But but but, but so event-wise, that was kind of the biggest experience. For me, I think there was something about that uh, festival in uh, in Spain. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, what was what what was it called again? Um, uh, it's uh, it's close to uh, Pamplona, and and those guys were just amazing. Uh, we were going to play with uh, the band uh, from uh, from uh, Hungary, isn't it? Called. Um, do you remember the name? The, the, the record, the, the star record is Mars Beli Kroniak. <laughs> the Mars uh, yeah. band from uh, Hungary. <laughs> They're called. Uh... But they couldn't come. No. So they had to play two sets, and uh, <laughs> the reception there was like fantastic. Uh, and people they they come there every year and they bring their children and they're grown and they have this convention and banquet they eat dinner together and it was something about the feeling there yeah yeah it's, yeah and um, i i, I want to ask you guys about like what's the plans now of course the album is going to be out pretty soon and then i'm sure you're going to do more promotion for that but we're living in dif difficult times at the moment and uh, uh so so what are what are, are the ideas and what's the plans going forward with the with the new album dwellers in the deep now um <clears throat> as you say it's we would of course in normal times we would have you know staged a, a proper release concert uh, and maybe you know have a sort of big event of it, of it. but we can't do that so Uh, we're thinking about um, making a, a you know a streamed concert. The details are are a bit in the blue uh, as of now, but um, we definitely have to do something. And the closest thing we probably can get to you know play for an audience or audience uh, in, uh, is to stream it. So that's in the works. No details that I can give here, but we're, we're uh, that's we're that's what you're hoping to, to be able to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm gonna go over into you know my my colleague Dario, who usually does this show. He has this segment called "What's in Your Walkman," and I guess yeah. a lot of a lot of the listeners on the show maybe never touched the Walkman, but. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for us, I guess for us, uh, that was a quite a, a common thing to walk around with all your cassettes in your backpack or something, and just listening to some stuff or or maybe the disc man. So uh, I want to ask you guys, uh, what what kind of stuff are you listening to at the moment? Oh, I'm so stoked right now! I I, uh, I just discovered a band, uh, an old band of course from the 70s called uh, Sunbirds, I think. A kind of a pan European band with uh, some uh, German drummer and maybe a saxophone player of flute player from Poland or something like that. And it sounds amazing. It's so fucking funky and, and um, kind of a fusion vibe to it. Uh, have you guys heard? Uh, no, the I'm, band? this is new to me. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm getting excited just hearing you talk about it. I have to check it out, this out for sure. Yeah. It was like, wow, how, how, why haven't I heard of this before? Um, so, uh, a fantastic song called The Spanish uh, Sun, I think. Sunbird Spanish Sun, that uh, tune is just fantastic. I think some uh, American rappers maybe uh, sampled some oh, uh, bass light there. <laughs> yeah, they, they love these funky, those 70s funky sounds. It's like the perfect base for a lot of their uh, for a lot of rap artists and hip hop artists I think it's maybe it's Snoop Dogg actually <laughs> <laughs> well that's cool I'm gonna check that out anything else you have in your uh, on your playlist well I had to check uh, I had to check out the new uh, Isengard album from um, Gurbe from Dark Throne uh, called Void uh, Emden and that was just hilarious as well uh <laughs> those uh, Isengard albums is just so much fun 
I almost yeah, no, not, uh, not a fun recording those. <laughs> I'm almost ashamed to say that I haven't listened to that yet. I'm a big, big Dark Throne fan, and uh, and but I haven't had the chance. But I'm I'm definitely gonna check that out. Oh, you're up for a treat. You're up for a treat. <laughs> that sounds I good. I recommend, uh, especially for Norwegians. I re- recommend uh, uh, the tune uh, "Rocky Million." Check well, it out. I will. I will. <laughs> What about you, Christian? Uh, anything particular you have been blasting lately? Yeah, yeah I uh, I think the newest discovery is um, is the you know recording career of Matt Berry. Do you know him? No. Nope. He's the guy from uh, the IT crowd and Toast of London. He's oh, the, that's the, the the boss guy, right? Yeah, the oh. boss guy. Yeah, I he heard something about that. He. It turns out I I I don't know how I came across it. I just googled him, I guess, to see what kind of shows he's been in, and then I suddenly see that he's released uh, five albums since 2005. So I checked it out, and and uh, he has an album called uh, Witch Hazel from 2013, I think. That was uh, I expected. You know, he's a comedian and. Quirkies, I expected some. Okay, he's more more of a comedian than he probably is a musician. But it turns out that that is a really good um, kind of psychedelic pop, progressive, uh, all all sorts of of, uh, of, uh, of a record. So it's yeah, I, that I've heard a lot on that uh, to that lately. Uh, well, that that sounds very interesting. To be honest, that, that uh, I also saw that he was a musician because it came up in my feed somewhere, and I was mm-hmm. like, "But this has to be some kind of." I thought this has to be some kind of jokey eighties vibe yeah. kind of stuff. But uh, the way you describe it sounds very cool. Yeah, I was very surprised. That was a little nugget because I, you know, I, I didn't know he was a musician as well. So. Uh, other than that, I I have a uh, I like Oom, you know the the um, what do you call it the Doom uh, Stoner Rock, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, Advaitic songs. I you know I come back to that record you know regularly, so uh, that's a fa- favorite, and uh, yeah, new. And I discovered a new duo. I think they're from New Zealand called Earth Tongue. Oh, I don't know if it's new to me. That. No, that's uh, oh. one girl on guitar and vocals, and a guy on, on uh, drums and vocal. And it sounds, uh, of course, they you know they swallowed the seventies rock and roll pillow, <laughs> but uh, they're they're. Really good, really young as well. I think they're probably, you know, in their early 20s or something. So I listened a bit to that. Um, Russian Circles, I think, is always yeah. fine. Their first good album, band. especially. Um, yeah. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> no, that, that's uh, new to me. Swedish klezmer music. Wow. <laughs> they have an al- album called Tarschwein. So... That's also, uh, you know, a, a record that pops up suddenly. <laughs> it pops up suddenly. I like that yeah. description. Yeah. I'm actually going a little back to the to school and uh, listening to a lot of uh, Cream these days and Ginger Baker and that kind of stuff. But because I, I kind of think that the best way to play rock is maybe through through jazz, like the people who created rock. So I'm going a little that. Way these days, listen to listening to Cream and uh, and Hendrix and those uh, drummers that had the jazz chops uh, yeah. present. See, see, uh, uh, and hopefully I'm gonna get something out of that. Uh, approaching prog rock, I listen to a lot of prog rock, and then I think my my drumming were kind of so influenced by. <laughs> Da, 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 da. really yeah. classic drumming from from my uh, that I kind of try to emulate those technical aspects of their drumming and I don't think I necessarily always made that groovy so now I'm going back to school oh, and, uh, and I'm going to do it right uh, this time 
Sounds good. I'm going to add some of the stuff I've been having in my own Walkman also. Uh, I've been listening a lot to this Norwegian band called Pixie Ninja. Uh, I don't know oh, if yeah, you guys yeah. know them. The Colors Out of Space that came out this summer. It's like a, yeah. it's like a tribute to, to Lovecraft uh, through music. It's very, very, very interesting and a, a great album. Um, and also, I've been, I, I've, I'm lucky enough to have the promo of this uh, another Norwegian band called Matterhorn, which uh, features yeah, yeah. Tommy Sebastian Holset, uh, known from some other more heavier bands, really. But uh, his album Outside uh, will be out on the 6th of November, so I've been playing that regularly, and I must say that's quite a refreshing take on... I don't know if you can call it like completely prog but alternative rock i don't know it's it's really good anyway yeah. and then of course yeah, i'm that going guy's, uh, that, that guy is the force so, you know he is really enthusiastic about his yeah. music he is and he 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 gets it out there and there's just a positive vibe about everything he he's been doing with his music so so i'm 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 glad to be to be able to listen to that album now and see that it all came to fruition and but like you guys, I'm also going a bit back to 1980 because I sort of rediscovered uh, Kerry Livgren's from Kansas Aha. solo yeah, album, yeah. Seeds of Change. And, uh, you know, listening to a sort of a progressive album with Ronnie James Dio on a couple of tracks as a vocalist is kind of a, I, I feel it's kind of a hidden gem. It has this, of course, this sympho style of Kansas in a way. And it's, and it's, I think maybe a little bit marred by being released in 1980 where you know they start to do a, a little bit of a weird shit uh, there but still the album is uh, the songwriting and the vocalists on there and everything is just really good really good does it have a christian vibe uh wasn't uh carrier like uh <laughs> the water christian yeah you're right it does have it it's it's co- it has a subtitle of something like you know the the religious journey of Kerry <laughs> Livgren or something. It's like a pre yeah, Neil Morse perfect. thing. Yeah. A pre Neil Morse thing, like uh, being, being all a devout Christian before uh, and, and a musician, but still I, I don't mind too much. I really, <laughs> no, I really no, no, enjoy no, the music. Really... Yeah. What uh, would Kerry Livgren be without God, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, when you take, when you have inspiration to create that kind of music, I don't, really care that much how where the inspiration comes from as long as the music turns out to be as as interesting as it is on on, on that album another tip is uh, like uh, in Norway there was a lot of kind of Christian progressive rock bands which are not uh, that much known uh, so now I'm really listening a lot to a band called Kerik and that stuff is just beyond it's fantastic oh really uh, i don't know if it's on spotify but uh that scene is just they have a totally uh, different approach and it's just wow you know I, I pride myself on having quite a good knowledge of norwegian prog but there here i have to say you out progged me <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna check that yeah. out because it sounds very interesting it sounds very interesting yeah and the the final album I wanted to mention that's been spinning regularly here is also an album that's going to be out on the 30th of October. It's We're, we're still staying in the Nordic countries in Finland. It's a, a death metal band called Convuls from Finland. It's an old 90s, early 90s death metal band that sort of turned progressive like a lot of those death metal bands did over the 90s and into the 2000s. And they're releasing an album called Death Star, which I really enjoy. It's like... Um, yeah, amorphous kind of style of, of progressive metal. Not really like a lot of these bands are very technical now and they're not they're more melody focused. So I really like that album. Well, I want to thank you guys for um, doing the interview and being on the show. And uh, I want to say good luck to you with the release of your new album, Dwellers in the Deep. It's going to be out on October the 23rd, right? Yeah. So thanks to everybody for listening and uh, stay safe out there, guys. 
Progcast is a production of Stuus Media and is presented by the Prog Space. It is produced by Randy M. Salo, Janine Stengel Lewis, Blake Lewis, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not an Elephant, and Van Kirsch does our graphics. New episodes of the Progcast drop every Monday and Thursday. And don't miss our Friday Top 5 episode where we discuss our favorite new releases from that week. For more interviews and reviews in the written form, check out theprogspace.com.